beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed we are shown the keys of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. Listen, let me tell you something. For years, for years, there has been a cry in my spirit. Somehow, there is a testimony in my spirit that our generation has lost touch with ancient realities. You hear me use that word again and again. People move forward, but something in my spirit keeps drawing me back. And it says, if you can go back enough, you will find something we lost. Hallelujah. I've been intrigued every time I read things in scripture and it talks about ancient things. There is something that the ancient knew. It's not supposed to be so difficult. We have lost touch with the dimension of reality. Carnality flesh intercourse with babylon cut short a flow of spiritual reality and the lord told me something last year he said mantles do not leave the earth to heaven that means every dimension of grace that has ever been displaced in the earth they are archived in certain dimensions here in the earth realm and if we can trust the ministry of the Holy Spirit, he will navigate us to those paths. And we will collide with these ancient mantles. And we will do strange things upon the surface of this earth. You believe that? And this is our journey. Show us great things, O God. The reality of spiritual laws. Aside from revealing the person and the minister of the Holy Spirit to the body of Christ one of the cardinal areas of my call is to teach the body of Christ the principles of the kingdom to unveil to the body of Christ that dominion is a resultant effect of the knowledge and the comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom a mystery is a hidden truth that requires the agency of the spirit or another spirit that is not of this realm to open an individual to the reality it's called a mystery mysteries the occultic realm operate on the strength of mysteries coded operations that are shrouded in mysteries science cannot explain it it takes your fraternity with another spirit to open you up to those dimensions so he said it has been given unto you to know the word know there is the word a man and a man knowing his wife it has been given to you to come into a union with the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah 
if we ever will attain to that stature of spiritual authority where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom then i want you to know that it will never just be by impartation it will never just be by stories it will stand upon the strength of something that we know what did job know that turned his financial predicament in a moment the Bible did not tell us what business he did. The Bible just said Job prayed for his friends. Mysteriously, people started coming from everywhere. Brothers and sisters, are there portals we have lost in the spirit? Have we not lost touch with certain dimensions of spiritual reality? Hallelujah. The prophet said, bring me a mystery. Who taught him? Who lectured him? How did he know? He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart. My heart is indicting a good matter. He said, yeah, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Who taught this man? Who taught the psalmist that praise was a garment that a man can wear? He called it a garment. Not an attitude of praise. A garment of praise. Every time they praise God in the place of war, I noticed they use a coded language. All they said was, for he is good and his mercy endures. It was not any kind of praise. There was a type. It was like a spiritual code. Every time they began to say, for he is good and his mercy endures, he rose as a man of war. Meaning not every word invokes every dimension. There is a kind of language that makes God to operate in a certain way. Are you learning something? Help us, oh God. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. Part of my resolutions this year is that I will open us up to deep things. Some of us will be afraid of some of the things we'll be learning. I've been praying and say, Lord, prepare your people. Because it will rattle the eye the foundation of what you know to be Christianity and you will know that many preachers have lied to us hallelujah so let's prepare our hearts because this thing is not the exclusive reserve of one man it has nothing to do with the boasting of a preacher let me tell you something the hallmark of an apostolic ministry I will keep saying it if we understand. It's not just miracles and signs and wonders and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. There is a dimension of that, right? But the hallmark of the true apostolic ministry is the ability to receive the revelation that is meant for a dispensation. To understand it and communicate it accurately to the people of God. Because the apostolic ministry is dispensational. Are you following me now? And the knowledge of God is also dispensational. Meaning there is a curriculum, there is a scope of understanding that God expects a dispensation to know. Are you following me now? So that what we call eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Every dispensation coming with a revelation of God. And adding that revelation to another dispensation. Are you following me now? And that means that our dispensation has certain dimensions of God that we must know and we must touch. But it takes the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Not just to do signs and wonders and to lay hands and heal the sick. That is important. But to be able to sustain a posture in the spirit such that we can receive these spiritual realities, understand them and interpret them to God's people. And then they will be able to walk in this path and you will see certain possibilities in our lives. Hallelujah. And this is what we aim to do in this place. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The reality of spiritual laws. Science has taught us that there are laws that govern this earth realm. They teach us in physics and, and chemistry and other aspects of science that there are laws and scientists have been able to come into the recognition of certain physical laws 
and they have been able to account for the explanation of certain tragedies that have happened to men hallelujah over time scientists began to inquire as to why men will encounter certain inexplainable tragedies and they later discovered that there were laws that were being violated unconsciously that you do not recognize that there is a law does not mean it's not there are you following me now praise the lord if a child does not know there is gravity and he jumps on a, a an altitude like this the child will fall gravity will not say i excuse you is that true there are many other laws now i want you to know that the same way spiritual laws govern this physical physical law sorry govern this realm there are spiritual laws that govern the operation of the spirit hallelujah you are able to walk very well when you can master the laws physically none of us will find ourselves walking against gravity for instance and if by any means you are to walk against gravity you know what to do to be able to remedy the the imbalance that you are creating and so you do not find yourself fighting the laws of nature gravity for instance friction for instance all of these are laws i want you to know that there are spiritual laws say spiritual laws many people have been able to find these laws and walk with these principles and they have been able to do mind-bogging things in the earth realm and as we explore this reality my goal tonight is not so much to share what the laws are as it is to bring us into a recognition that as scattered as spiritual things look as scattered as the earth is there is a rhythm are you getting my point there is an exact synergy there is a sequence there is an equation of the happening of things they are not as haphazard as we think there is a level of order and accuracy god designed the earth it is our inaccurate understanding or total ignorance to his principles that has resulted to certain levels of setbacks and limitations in our lives and in this year of the rain god wants to open us up to a recognition of certain principles and you will find out that what has grounded you for years you will work cheaply you will now find out that the the enemy that many of us has been have been talking about they are not necessarily the demons out there our ignorance our lack of understanding the laws of god say amen the key to kingdom dominion please write this down the key to dominion the key to influence the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom i'll repeat it again please make sure you are writing something or at least jotting something on your notepad or so on the phone or so the key to kingdom dominion the key to influence influence is the capacity to alter people's mindsets the key to power the key to wealth is hidden in our discovery of the ancient spiritual laws of the kingdom there are ancient laws encapsulated in this bible there are laws that are older than us there are laws that predate our dispensation they have been responsible for the rise and the fall of kings they have been responsible for the rise and fall of champions and when we find peace with these laws we will do big things for the kingdom we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open 
Personalize it. Say, I have come with an open heart. I have come with open hearts. Oh, let me accept Daniel chapter 19. Let's begin our journey so that we can pray. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 22. Mandi blako shibra hata kusiba adaba. The story of a cruel king who slept and had a dream. Forgot the dream and forgot the interpretation. And was mounting pressure upon all his wise men and cabinets. And Daniel said, give us time. And the Bible says he asked for wisdom. And in the night, can we read together verse 19? One to read. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Verse 20. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. 21. He changed the times and seasons. He removed kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. He said, Then was the secret revealed. Brothers and sisters, secrets can be revealed. Not everything is known by every Christian. Are you hearing me? The Bible says the secret things of the Lord are not just with Christians. They are with them that fear Him. And He will reveal His covenants. He will show them His covenants. There are mysteries in our world. There are secrets that have been archived in the bowels of the spirit. And it takes men who can press to say, Lord, open my eyes. Show me the secrets. That's why all things are not possible for everybody. Is that true? Kentucky Fried Chicken, one of the great eateries around. Um, they have a secret recipe that till today has not been revealed. Is that true? That secret recipe is what makes them unique. Coca-Cola, till today, they have not revealed the exact formula and combination. Great men dwell upon the strength of secrets. In ancient time, it was a taboo to reveal the deepest of secrets. They were known only by the king and his envoys, those we call knights or apostles, they were the highest representatives of the king. They knew where treasures were hidden in castles. They knew secret places of escape in chambers. When, when they came to defeat a nation, they knew how to, to invoke the powers of those territories to fight on their behalf. It was an access that was given to them. And so as his ambassadors, God wants to show us. He doesn't want to hide anything from us. He said, come, let us reason together. I want to show you how I operate the heavens. So that you can draw from this and do wonders in the earth. If you believe that, say amen. So spiritual laws are real. The spirit realm is a real realm of existence. Just like the physical realm. It is only a lot more superior to this realm. 
This realm is bounded by many things. There are limitations. For instance, this realm is purely three-dimensional. But in the realm of the spirit, there are many dimensions. A lot of people have preached that there are four dimensions, five. I don't believe that. I believe that there are infinite dimensions in the realm of the spirit. Because the possibilities in the spirit are defined by what dimension you can function. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I want us to know that the spirit realm is real. The spirit realm is real. And there is a constant interaction between the spirit realm and this realm. Every single one of us under the sound of my voice and those following us online, every single one under the sound of my voice interacts with the spirit realm every time. Whether you recognize it or not, the condition to, to interact with the spirit realm is just to be alive. Remember I began the teaching last week showing us the five elements, right? The elements of creation. We drink water. Is that true? We breathe air. Why don't we breathe dust? We breathe air to live. Air that seems to be immaterial, but we breathe it in our material body to keep us alive. So, our biological composition is, is, a, is a, a, an intertwining of both this realm and the realm of the spirit. Prosperity is an intertwining of the spirit realm and this realm. Success in life is an intertwining of the realm of the spirit and this realm. The anointing, the ability and the agency of the spirit... When a man stands and you look at somebody with cancer and stretch your physical hand, you may not even make contact with the person and the person starts shaking or the person falls. It tells you that there is something more than what your eyes see. There is an interaction. Is that true? Watch this. I'm speaking to you. There is no, di there is no digital connection between my mouth and your heart. But what I am saying is passing through your ears and it has the ability to influence your paradigm because they are spirit and life hallelujah so we must we must rise to this reality that all we see in our world brothers and sisters is not all there is praise the lord all we see is not all there is there is more say there is more in this building right now inside and outside there are more angels than this crowd gathered here and many of them are doing many things as i teach right now some are imparting graces and all of these things right walking in partnership with the spirit and they are not only angels there are also the spirits of just men made perfect testifying like the witnesses that stood with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah and Moses. Representing the law and the prophet. They are not the only witnesses. There are many others. Enoch, for instance. Right? Many other people. So the Bible says, Ye are come unto Mount Zion. And he begins to tell us all the things that happen in that place. Listen, the earlier you realize that life is entirely spiritual, that the physical manifestation is only a little portion. Hallelujah. Occultists understand this. Politicians understand this. Is that true? I was, I was studying the world religion. I'll give you a few statistics as we progress. Very shocking. I didn't know there was that much religion in the whole world. I thought there were just maybe 100 or 1,000. I will tell you the figure shortly. <laughs> and all these religions have followers. Ardent, committed, die-hard followers. Meaning the spirit of man is searching for something. Searching for a connection with its source. Somehow, mankind knows... That until you interact with this, the spirit realm, there is no stability to your person. There is a longing. 
So we pray to a deity we call different names for many religions. And we hope that somebody out there of a higher consciousness is listening to us. There are spiritual laws. The same way I can violate gravity and violate other laws and reap the consequences of my disobedience or ignorance. That is the same way I can stumble into a spiritual law I do not know and activate its operation unconsciously and suddenly begin to see certain things manifest physically. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then on the other hand, I can deactivate the operation of a spiritual law without knowing and begin to receive a ripple effect in the physical. Are you following me now? So it seems to me like the journey of many Christians is, is, is a blind dashing into spiritual laws. We are not exactly sure. Sometimes we touch something that activates prosperity. And ha has that happened to you? For weeks you find out that favor is coming, everything is happening. And then it's like something happens and it's short. There are times that you find out that everything you say in prayer comes to pass. And then other times you pray and it's as if you are talking to yourself. Hallelujah. There are times you suddenly step into a dimension and seasons and you are having dreams every night. And everything you see is coming to pass. And then certain times. What is responsible for this opening and closing of the gates of the spirit? This is what I want to teach you. The reality of spiritual lives. Even for preachers, there are times you stand to preach and you sense an unusual open heavens. You are just ministering and my goodness, scriptures that you, you read years ago that you cannot even quote normally suddenly come to your mind and you are quoting them verbatim. And other times it looks like you stand and you are wondering, I hope I'm not messing up. Listen, if you get what I'm teaching you, you will keep certain portals of the spirit open perpetually. Hallelujah. Certain people have touched this realm in different forms. Hallelujah. Now watch this. The fundamental principle I want us to understand as we explore this very sensitive teaching. Because what I'm going to be saying will rattle many of us. Hallelujah. Some of the things that I'm going to be saying will challenge us. But I want you to follow me. The fundamental principle I want you to have at the back of your mind is that everything created belongs to God. You will see the advantage of this statement as we progress. Everything created belongs to God. Secondly, all power belongs to God. Hallelujah. All power. Psalm 62 verse 11, please, quickly. Psalm 62 verse 11. It says, once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power, everybody shout all power. All power. You went to school. What is your understanding of all power? Meaning, if there is any performance that ever occurs, any manifestation of the supernatural in the earth, to any degree, was either a release or a corruption of power that came from God. Please follow me. God has spoken once. Twice I have heard this. That power belongs to God. Look up please. When a magician takes a white handkerchief. Please follow me tonight. And waves it. And brings out a dove out of it. What happened? What happened? Hallelujah. When a magician slices himself into half and holds the remaining half of him and is walking and bastardizes your knowledge of physics and biology, what exactly is happening? Listen to me. He said, once have I spoken. Twice. In other words, I emphasize it as a witness that all power belongs to God. That means the central force 
in the realm of the spirit it's not astrology it's not the constellation the seat of power in the spirit is god himself just follow me every religion is the hybrid of a man's pursuit to uncover and look for this mystery entity that we call God. And over time, what has happened is, listen, falling angels. You know, I spoke to you about the pre-Adamite dispensation. We spoke a bit about that, right? Realities that predate Genesis 1. You find that in Job 38, right? The creation, we spoke a bit now, last year, this year, the creation of angels and all of these things right now watch this let me show you a few mysteries in the bible have you read in your bible that stars fought for a woman called deborah question was she a non-believer <laughs> have you had that thing that stars fought for deborah have you had people mention statements like you were born with 10 stars eh? whether you believe it or not just follow me I'm not teaching you Scientology. I'm provoking you to be mature. Just listen to me. Are you following me now? Many of us come from different cultural backgrounds. Where at one point or the other, they have brought somebody to your house. Hello? Baba? Mama? Whatever. They shall brought somebody to your house. And he was able to do certain things. Whether he used coal or not. Whether he used whatever. And he began to unveil certain things either reveal the person that stole is that true stole money or meat or lied is that true and then he began to reveal some things how many of you have seen people who are not born again they have never given their life to christ yet they have functioned in what you know to be word of knowledge is that true in certain tribes they call them those whose head has opened is that true people who can see beyond certain things listen God has spoken once. Let it be known to you that when it comes to the realm of the spirit, there are not many forces. There is one force. Everything revolves around him. His name is God Almighty. Whether we accept to call him God Almighty or not. Are you getting my point now? Hmm. So how come Satan can manipulate power how come traditional rulers can manipulate power please follow me how come a man can look at this lady and say look um you will not give birth case close he didn't ask her whether she had faith or not he just spoke on the strength of something he has been taught is that true how come people read magical books huh all kinds of books they tell them recite this and the moment they recite it things start happening brothers and sisters am i telling a lie or oh. pastors have been afraid of confronting this issue because if we don't many of us will not know when we have entered witchcraft if all power belongs to god then whose power are witches using follow me if all power belongs to God, then the religions that can turn, there, there, there's the video of a young guy that walked upon water. Physically, he walked upon it. Huh? He walked upon a building sideways and came down. No pastor has done that, at least. I only know one bold pastor who decided his, he was Prophet Daniel, the one that lions tore him into pieces in the That's the closest thing that I know. But the Bible says, once have I spoken, twice, that all. So, is it that God gave it to these demons? No, think about it. Go to Zaria city and meet somebody and say, I want a husband. What's that thing that they carry? Love portion, wealth portion, all kinds of, of things. They give you and one young man is just moving and they blow something towards him. He becomes absolutely confused right and starts pursuing a lady helplessly until she does whatever she wants to do with it now think about that if the bible is telling the truth that all power belongs to god i have a question 
By the way, it will interest you to know that there are 4,200 religions as of today in the world. How many? 4,200 registered all the 4,200 religions. Where did they get their power from? Satan does not create anything. Is that clear? Do we all agree? Question. Was God sleeping? Did they steal some of the power without his seeing? What is the mystery behind the seeming strengthening of wicked forces? Some of you have dreams and you see all kinds of spirits appear to you. You are trying to call Jesus. They shut your mouth with all your knowing of Jesus. Jesus and they stand and they laugh. Question. Who empowered them? If Satan was created, <laughs> are you prepared for this year of the rain? We are going to talk, we are, we are going as deep as God will help us go. Because we must answer some questions. Let me tell you, when you answer these questions, you will, you, you will start laughing at what used to make you cry. Because when you see it, you know that, uh -uh, this is the one plus one. This is what made it happen. And I told you that every time you catch a light, what happens in the spirit? Grace is given to you to walk in that reality. So you can see five people struggling over a demon. Go out, go out, and you will only pass. No prayer. Light. The spirits know what they are seeing. You see that? Because the strength of evil is darkness. The Bible calls them rulers of darkness, not rulers of light. Whenever there is darkness, they are authorized to rule. All religions of the world claim to connect people to wealth, to joy, to happiness, to life, to peace, and to God. Or some kind of higher cosmic power for assistance. That's the whole bit behind every world religion. Is that not true? If somebody comes to take you now and says, Mary Ann, I want you to be part of the Confucius religion. You think you will just come? Won't I promise you something? I'll promise you wealth and happiness. I'll promise you that whatever you want, speak certain things and it will happen. Right? If Marianne speaks it and it happens, she will invite Shei and say, Shei, it's easier than that other thing you are doing. Shei will first say, I don't believe it. When life presses her to the wall, she will adopt it. The strength of this religion is that the suffering of mankind is endless. And so eventually, people will search for solution anyhow. Are you getting me? By the way, many of these religions have their branches in Africa. You would think that our suffering or our, our backwardness in technology will make us say, what is all this? Find out how many Africans do. They are not Christians, they are not Muslims, they are not Hindus, right? They are something else. And they have followers. There is an acclaimed personality in this nation. I, I told you that I've repented from mentioning names. Acclaimed personality who I think for 48 years or thereabout. I don't know if it was him or, or his brother or somebody who never came out never came out for about 48 years look even if you are sitting down for 48 years power somehow the devil must come upon you he must land upon your life and interact with you sacrifices that men have made now the question is brothers and sisters if god is good and god is great and he does not eschew what would be the explanation to the seeming empowerment? Preachers have thought that the power you have, the power Satan has is your power or he collected it. How did he collect it? Collect it back. The question, how did he collect it? You know, we generalize things that we owe people. Demon is working with something that is solid and provable. Hallelujah. You prayed about something. The answer did not come. Your brother said, come, let's go and visit somebody. They visited the person in two days. The answer came. Is that true? It's true you gave thanksgiving in church, but we really know 
where that answer came from. Is that true? A woman cries to God, comes to we preachers, and we prophesy in the name of Jesus. I command that cancer to go. Nothing went. Is that true? They just respect us and they won't publish anything on the newspaper. And they quietly go and meet another person. And they invoke things and they have the baby and women of God come and claim the glory. It's better let's sit down and ask ourselves the truth. And answer these questions. Or keep telling lies. There are many people telling lies in church. Many of the miracles people claim to get in church. I am telling you. They got it outside the church. They consulted a lot of powers. There are families today who will never give their children in marriage until they go and ask certain people. And they confirm. Is that true? Whether, whether you are a pastor, whatever you believe, keep your westernization. They will go and consult. Even if it means them buying goat, ram, sheep, human being, they will consult. Is that true? What then is this mystery? There are five religions, major religions, out of the 4,200. The first is Hinduism. The second is Buddhism. The third is Islam. The fourth is Christianity. And the fifth is New Age. There's no time and it's not within the scope of the teaching to tell you what this individual sect, if I will call them, believe. There are others who believe like the Hindus, for instance. Hindus believe there is one great God, but he expresses himself in many ways. Meaning there are many ways to approach him, right? So they can have many kinds of deities or envoys that help you communicate to this God. And they believe in several doctrines of reincarnation. Buddhism, many people think Buddhism worship Buddha. No. They just feel that Buddha is the person who has been able to attain that highest level of consciousness, as they call it. And so they model after his life. Same with all the other religions. New Age is the recent teachings that was perpetrated by the kingdom of darkness. Under New Age, you are God. It's a, it's a little stealing away from the Bible. All these religions, there's no time. I would have proven to you that they all have their origin from the Bible. That's why they can prove to any Christians. That's why Christians are the most vulnerable. Is that true? They take Bible and show you what supports their belief. And you say, wow, this thing is in the Bible. Meaning God must support it. There comes that theory that all roads still lead to the same God. Have you heard those, those devilish teachings? And so people tell you, don't worry. When you go to the Habalist, you say, look, don't be scared with all this color not I'm doing. It's still the same thing. It's just different ways of invoking the same God. And then he invokes the color not and he says, Psalms 1 verse 3. I say, ah, Psalms, Abba. I know Psalms. Go ahead. Right? To now justify that because Psalms 1 was mentioned, God is in it. Is that true? What deceit. What deceit. All power belongs to God. Now watch this. I want you to know this. The fallen angels. Hallelujah. Those we call the fallen angels. I've taught us but I'll repeat it again just for the sake of establishing a few things. The fallen angels. When they came to the earth. Please listen to me. They interacted with men. And part of that interaction was responsible for supplying certain deep informations don't forget that they were all in heaven right certain laws are god's own laws and they are made to happen how many of you go to the farm and pray and fast for crops to grow please tell the truth after you sow you go back and say oh god no once you sow it to the earth you go back a man can kill another man and steal his land and sow and still reap a bumper harvest because of the existence of physical laws so it is god has put spiritual laws are you getting my point now for spiritual laws to work please come i'm establishing something come sir for spiritual laws to work in the spirit a spirit must assist you in activating its operation are you getting the rules for any spiritual law at all to work 
there must be a spirit entity that will assist you it is in partnership with a spirit before any spiritual law can be activated so if i am a magician and i'm doing a lot of abracadabra for instance there must have been a spirit that was invoked appeased or a demand is placed upon him is that true now let's explain our traditional festivals what happened what is the whole goal of many traditional festivals they first appease certain spirits either with people who must die or sacrifices and when those spirits are appeased the mediums that interface between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm let the people know that ah this goat the spirit has, has eaten it although you are seeing a physical goat the priest ends up eating the flesh physically uh, uh, the honorarium the, the, everything goes to the priest but i'm saying that the whole goal is that the sacrifice has been received is that true that's what happens no man by his strength can activate spiritual laws are you getting my point there must be the assistance of a spirit watch this i want to shock you now the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws just follow me the holy spirit is not the only spirit that can activate spiritual laws the spirits of dead men can activate spiritual laws ancestral spirits can activate spiritual laws demons and spiritual wickedness that operate in the heavenlies on the strength of the fact that they are spiritual entities they can guide men to activate spiritual laws watch this so there is a universal law in the spirit for anything to be of god and to carry to carry god's signature there is only one spirit that validates are you getting my point the holy spirit is the only spirit authorized the most holy spirit of god the only one authorized to activate any spiritual law such that god becomes involved and the glory goes to god are you getting my point that means watch this it is possible that i can use magic power and look at sam and do a miracle a real miracle it happens but it did not happen by the spirit of god but because it is a manipulation of a spiritual law it will happen accurately are you getting what i'm saying that means i can give a woman a child but not by the spirit of god is that true i can use the advantage of my partnership with another spirit and remove cancer from her stomach and put back another spirit that means i can receive word of knowledge from a spirit accurate word of knowledge but not from god are you are you getting what i'm saying when you understand this listen to me you will hold the holy spirit as a matter of life and death are you getting my point now the problem with many men of god is when they started their journey they started with the holy spirit but they allowed their passion to make them leave the holy spirit so when the holy ghost said wait i'm schooling you in this area they said i'm in a hurry i must enter prophecy i must enter this holy ghost you can go and another holy spirit another spirit really not holy another spirit continue the journey are you getting the point and because they seem to have been progressing in spiritual things that spirit of deception made them feel that is the continuation of the ministry of the holy spirit so although in them they feel something is wrong there is there is a mixing many men of god in this country around that we call fake are not fake even those who do magic most of what has happened is a perversion are you getting me they went under certain people certain hands were laid in them and certain demonic forces were invoked to begin to work with them and it activated certain possibilities and they started gaining knowledge on certain laws 
Is God helping us? Or are you afraid of the teaching? You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. I know you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. For you are being changed. His glory is being revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Listen, when you hear us talk a lot about the Holy Spirit and emphasize Him, it is because there are other spirits already. And if you do not embrace the Spirit of God, you will meet with another one eventually. The day you need a job, you will meet with one. Hear me, look up. You never go to a herbalist and return the same way you came. Did you hear what I said? You never, impossible, every man communicates to you out of the strength of the spirit that assists him. If you come to me for help and I'm a magician and you are watching me do the magic, you finish and say, nice man. You think you just left, but you did not live alone. Automatically. That's why you will return again. Someone makes you return. The people inside and outside, both those who wanted to come or did not come, the spirit of the living God drew you. Is that true? When you understand this, brothers and sisters, you will not be impressed just by everything that happens physically. You will seek to know what is the motivation and the spirit behind the operation. Many of us are, are very, once you see supernatural things, you are happy. It doesn't matter whether it came from the pit of hell or wherever. You are just happy. Right? And right now we live in a generation where many people want to enter prophecy. Young people want to enter prophecy. And, and, and they want to enter world of knowledge. They want to enter dimensions. Now, nothing is wrong with that. It's because of the revival that is coming. But Satan is already preparing a major deception. Because he has seen it. That's one of the reasons why I'm teaching this. There is a major arsenal of deception. That the devil wants to release to the Nigerian church. Where there will be an outburst of a seeming outpouring. But it's not the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And you will see men move in charismatic dimensions. You will see people do things like angels. Right? Almost no limits to their impossibilities. And even they themselves would not know that they are being deceived. Are you seeing why the book of Revelations and the rest prays that even the elect can be deceived? I have prayed for many people in meetings. Anointed people. Ministers of the gospel. And as I minister to them, I may never get to tell them. But they may think what they are receiving in that meeting was impartation. What they were receiving was first deliverance from a strange spirit. Acts chapter 16. Don't turn there. Remember a lady who had the spirit of divination. Is that true? Did she give people word of knowledge? Please answer me. And the Bible says when some businessmen found her, they said you are exactly what you are looking for. And they started using her. You pay money to prophesy. You think if the people were not getting results, they will come back? They were getting results. She will say this will happen and it will happen. And when Paul, I like Paul. So, Two spirits. Paul had a word of knowledge. Her too, she had her own word of knowledge. Two spirits. Right? And Paul looks at her. And she begins to say, These are great men of God. You know what she was looking for? She was looking for partnership. Because human beings cannot discern the difference. So that she knew that Paul was only visiting the city. So let's be friends. So that when you leave the city, they will say, Ah, ah. If Paul is not here, I am here. 
pastors hear me you must be careful in this day and age the kinds of meeting and ministerial associations you join yourself with there are many of us they invite you everywhere to preach with everybody and your answer is yes sir you think you are saving sinners you will enter the midst of devils without knowing and they will corrupt the authenticity of the grace of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it will be a three-day meeting you will be the one to start first you will start and there will be mighty signs and wonders when you finish devils will come and hug you and you will snap together and then the next day people will come and they will say just like the servant of god ministered yesterday we are continuing and people will catch strange spirit there are meetings people have gone to the moment they left the meeting lost came upon their lives and they started looking for ladies uncontrollably they fell under the anointing they rolled around and prayed in tongues and the brother got up with miracle power and love for girls confusion how can i be moving so much in the anointing right or somebody gets up and just begins to steal the reality of spiritual laws we constantly interact with this law watch this spiritual laws are very powerful because they are not only creative they can change realities in this physical realm are you following my teaching now that is the reason why a magician can hold a handkerchief and say sam hold it they say roll it and sam will roll it and sam will bring out a foul how does handkerchief change to a foul right what they simply did was to take advantage of the laws of creation and manipulate it are you getting my point and what is the goal the goal is to convince you to come into partnership with the spirit that is assisting them the spirit that is assisting them is not assisting them for nothing i hope you know that when jesus was on the earth he was not the only one doing miracles i hope you know remember there was a certain time the disciples were angry and they were complaining that there are some people that are doing miracles somewhere jesus you are the happening man where did this and we are your other people so if it's not you it should be us where are these strangers coming from again and jesus made a very controversial statement he said whoever is not what against us is for us ah spiritual laws so deborah could look at the stars and say stars i understand what you represent to the inhabitants of the earth align yourself in a way that the powers that the men use for war will not work and the bible says the stars fought for deborah with the permission of god joshua my namesake in the bible what happened to him he looked at the sun and said if this sun goes down they are going to kill our people because of that sun stand still right daniel went to bed and the secret was revealed and he said oh king i know what you saw you saw a being an image stand with the head of gold the breastplate of silver and you saw clay mixed with metal at his feet and he began to describe the fall of different empires the christian empire the babylonian empire and down to the new age that attempts to communicate towards virtual reality that's the last empire the feet that is a mixture of clay and iron one side the government is soft on another side the government is hard it's a mystery he saw it described brothers and sisters listen to me the the proof that god is in a thing is not just in the result but the spirit that initiates and sustains that process this is where i'm driving at the proof that a thing is of god the holy ghost must be both the initiator and the sustainer of that spiritual process otherwise it is fetish it is demonic it is from darkness 
even if it produces a real result i'm giving you the reason now is producing a real result because it was the manipulation of a physical law or a spiritual law and because of the advantage of the superiority of the realm of the spirit over the physical realm it will produce results watch this every spirit that initiates a process leaves a signature of itself upon that process are you hearing what i'm saying when julius Baga builds what do they leave they build their their logo is that true if pw builds they leave everything meaning if satan gives a child he will leave his signature right if satan heals the sick he will leave his signature when you know this you will know the reason why many people do not experience complete deliverance or complete healing or many there are many reasons but the major reason is because satan comes to steal kill and to destroy so although he uses spiritual law there must be darkness in his operation so satan will give you a miracle that will create another problem right one miracle that creates another problem and you come to him he gives your family money and then gives another person the spirit of drunkenness when you come as drunkenness is being solved barrenness follows right there is a signature one law being activated and causes another one that's why it is the blessing of the lord that can make rich and the there will be no sorrow there is always a signature of darkness that signs upon whatever comes from satan please hear me tonight not every open door is anointed the fact if you force a door in the spirit it will open thank you jesus christ there are secular musicians that sing and for those of us who used to listen to their songs or those who listen around us we pass by when you hear their voices you know that this voice is it has a glory that is not physical are you getting me spiritual laws manipulated but they must pledge allegiance to the spirit that assisted them that's why you listen to the music and physically you receive the glory that looks like from heaven but it does something to your spirit man because those laws help satan to continue his agenda in the earth is god speaking to us tonight so number one realize that there are spiritual laws number two realize that no man can activate the operation of spiritual laws until assisted by a spirit entity number three there are many spirits that can activate spiritual laws spirits of the dead all kinds of fallen spirits but god has only one spirit that is permitted authorized to search his heart and activate these laws according to his counsel for man and the name of that spirit is the spirit of the living god is the holy ghost spirit of the living god is the whole is, is number one we have not allowed the spirit of god to teach us these operations of the spirit so that we can align ourselves with these laws of the spirit i may just touch on one of the law or maybe two of the laws really we'll just touch on two of those spiritual laws and then we'll just end because i want us to pray hallelujah praise the lord laws of the spirit watch this this guy is playing this did you know that he's activating a law a spiritual law what he's playing is a language your senses don't understand but your spirit understands it that's why you want to sit down and keep listening to it are you hearing what i'm saying the melodies you know why many people are addicted to secular music honestly it's not just that they are bad people is that those melodies are languages they draw your spirit but because those who sing them have fraternized with certain spirits they draw you and they induce the operation of certain strange spirits 
so you hear him play what he's playing he's playing the strings and is is doing something to your spirit man if a habali sits down and plays you will keep enjoying and you will fall down but not under the anointing of the holy ghost you will fall down and stand up and something will land on you are you getting that now so it matters what spirit you sit under it matters what spirit produces the result that you celebrate it matters not just that results are being produced brothers and sisters hear me if we do not rise to understand the laws of the spirit we who are the sons of light i want you to know that many people will run to the devil and he will give them the result they want by operating spiritual laws and take their souls in exchange if we do not rise to contend for the power and the grace that will cause fruitfulness in the life of women they will go to babalawos every day we can be grumbling and be calling everybody fake and calling everybody <laughs> we have to be careful because some of us are the ones who are fake not just because we are going to have a list but we have refused to hold on to that which is real see that praise the lord the holy spirit must be the initiator and the sustainer of every spiritual knowledge we receive this becomes our only guarantee to escape perversion the holy spirit is the only guarantee that will escape perversion please let me surprise you and understand me you can take just this bible verbati without the presence of the holy spirit you can still hold get into error are you getting me you can still hold the bible blindly and you will still get into error there are many people who go to Habalis. i counsel a lot of people and some people come and meet me and they or their children or wives have gone to Habalis. and they say they go to the Habalis and they see many books and they see holy bible holy bible was produced by a publishing company some of the people who produce this thing are not even born again is that true they are just doing business zondervan or whatever publishing company but it is the presence of the spirit of the living god meaning a demon spirit can still come upon this and give it another interpretation that's why every sect of the christian faith uses this but they got another interpretation by the interaction of strange spirits genesis 11 that's what happened to nimrod kush the origin of witchcraft nimrod kush these fallen angels appeared to him in fact before genesis 11 the days of noah the bible says strange aliens started coming upon the earth is that true and they started sleeping with the daughters of men brothers and sisters our ladies are smart people do you think an angel will just come with wings and horn and say um marianne i'm in love with you would you run if you see a beast with tail with horn says i'm before he says i'm in love you will run away these beings were not daft they came and walked like men i told you angels don't have wings and there is no record of angels with wings in the bible those who have wings are cherubims in fact angels appeared with people they ate with people in the bible is it not true angels ate with people in the bible when the angel appeared to mary she didn't say i'm afraid she wondered what the salutation not the angel meaning they had been seeing them when the angel appeared to zechariah and all of these kinds of people it is the seraphs that cover cartoon films have have created these things based on their interpretation and now we are not criticizing them but they have not helped us to understand the reality of spiritual things <laughs> hallelujah are we following now ah i sense the presence of god there are so many spiritual laws i want you to know that if I ask you what are the physical laws, you will name them. Sir Isaac Newton, in his study of mechanics, came up with several laws, right? There are, the, the, are fundamental laws, first, second, third law. There are all kinds of laws. 
loss of thermodynamics, conservation of matter, physics and chemistry has all kinds of law. Newton's law of universal gravitation. There are all kinds of law. Chemistry, Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium. All kinds, the Schrodinger equation. All of these things are men and women coming together in an attempt to explain laws. There are laws that guide our understanding into quantum physics right when we do chemistry qualitative analysis and all of that we try to use the colors or or the things that emanate from solutions to be able to help us know what um, ion or whatever it is that is there all of these are physical laws in the same way there are spiritual laws spiritual laws spiritual laws bless you sam sorry hallelujah Let's touch on two of these laws, can we? I read an article. There is a powerful series on finance. When we are teaching that one, we will share it. But let me give you the preview. The anchor scripture to that, that series is, Thou anointest my head with oil. And my cup run it over. There was a relationship between the anointing on his head and the running over of the cup. Thou anointed my head with oil and my cup run it over. Hallelujah. Now, a wealthy man was once asked what the secret of his wealth was. And I got to find out that all he said was he found an ancient manual right a manual that dates 2300 years ago written by a greek philosopher that manual they seem they said seemed to contain some magic powers that even if you read just the title alone fortunes will begin to come to you i know some of you with all this message i say where is that manual i can ask god for forgiveness where is that manual? <laughs> Repent. This is the year of the rain. Many of you have suffered. It doesn't matter what. Where is that? Some of you will go and browse it after this, this meeting. Is there an online version? Let me go come and read it and come for miracle service. Hallelujah. That means, you know what this Illuminati and secret societies and all these occultic organizations do they are men and women who interacted with these spirit beings and they reveal to them a lot of these spiritual laws they reveal to them that this universe is not just sand they reveal to them that air is not just air water is not just water and they have excellently archived this principle through centuries right let me tell you these were the very principles that kings used. Did you hear that in ancient times, king had, kings had scrolls and certain things were written. In fact, part of the writings were magic formulas that would open certain doors. You see them in some of the films that you watch. All these things were an aberration of spiritual laws. What does that tell you? That means truly all things are available for life and godliness. If we can allow the Holy Spirit to take the word of God and guide us all things are really possible hallelujah one of the most prominent business law among many business people is what they call the law of attraction i i, I don't believe it in that sense and that law teaches that it is is a is an extension of of newton's law of universal gravitation that the earth is a living thing right and it begins to say all kinds of things and it credits the power to modern nature it makes it look like modern nature is supervising our, our, our activities. That's, that's demonic from the pit of hell. The devil will never give credit to God. And they have used it and made children brilliant in school. They have used those laws. How many of you have, 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 have seen all these things they spoke about? Uh, they speak about hypnotism and all of this. So I know I'm stretching you tonight. Some of you are wondering, who am I now? Am I a Christian? No, <laughs> listen i'm training you because one day many of you who want to go abroad you will go abroad and you will look for living faith and dunamis and redeem you will not find anywhere the only one you will find is a temple 
a temple you must greet the priest to resume your work and once you go there they will look at you and when you will not bow they will ask you questions and you say in koinonia I was taught abc and they laughed they say really you know lack of exposure is what is making some of us comfortable with this our christianity because we think the whole world is like zaria when you go out of this place and see the way people hate god you will know you need more to stand That true. That's why God refused you from going abroad. Because you would have, you would have, you would have converted. Two days you would have, you would have left God. By the time they bamboos your mind, and then they tell you, okay, just read this portion, and you read this portion, and you go out, and people start calling you from Nigeria and sending you money. So what is going on? Ah, say let me read the other part that I didn't read again. You think you won't do it? hallelujah and the holy spirit has guided me through these spiritual laws a lot of them have been preached in the body of christ but even those who have preached them have not preached them with the level of revelation and gravity they just preach them because one person had another man of god preach it hallelujah number one my goodness pray in tongues for one minute say Lord open my eyes something is about to change in your life now I've had several encounters through the word of God I'm about to share with you I've read it in books over the years but when God began to open me up to it it changed my life forever Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 Let's see how far God will help us. We have to stop somewhere to pray. What you are about to learn must change you. I'm telling you, you will be so changed, you will be surprised. Many of you will carry the presence of God. You will carry the glory of God. You will see breakthroughs happen in your life in ways that will surprise you. Everybody read, please. One, two, read. Just the first portion, the first clause, one to read. Listen, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become, so he already is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he, so he. I learned and I have seen it. I taught the heads of department during our retreat a bit of it and the Lord has permitted me to share this now. That your life, listen to me, your environment and the quality of your life is a reflection of both your mindset and the sum total of your belief system. Listen to me. Your life, the quality of your life today the quality of your life, the quality of your environment, the quality of the works of your hands and the things that you do is a direct reflection of your ideologies, a direct reflection of your perceptions about God, about life, about wealth, about whatever it is. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, that means your life will eventually open up and reveal to the physical what is in your heart. A powerful spiritual law that your life and your environment will eventually become a reflection of your reality. My goodness. My goodness. That means heaven is a revelation of God's mindset. Heaven is a reflection of the excellency of his thoughts. Earth is a reflection of the mindset of mankind. Selfishness. Watch this. I don't know if it was last week or so that, that I said it. I think I shared it during the retreat. Take a security man 
Is that true? Take him to the office, assuming you have a, a corporation with three story buildings. The last story building belongs to the CEO. Take the security man to that story building. Leave him there for two weeks. That office will start reflecting his mindset. Right? Immediately. Because when the man sits on that chair, his mindset will refuse that reality. First, he will feel he does not qualify for it. And then second, he will be afraid because he would think that after a while they will come and take it. So he will say, let me steal and loot. The first thing is he will remove whether, <laughs> what did I say that day? Stabilizer. He will steal the stabilizer and run away and sell it. I say, how can you put a the big stabilizer, 10,000? I mean, the, the light is regulated from Nepa on or, or what, what they call him now? Power holding company. Praise God. So he will steal it. The next time he will see a beautiful artwork and he will say, how much will they sell this one, please? He say, 20,000. I say, go and sell it. There are two. Sell one and leave one. Right? You give him a glass cup. He says, no. Package them together. Let's sell it. Buy me a rubber cup, please. I'm, I'm contented. His mindset is already playing out. He will step into the place dirty and won't clean it. Right? He will eat food and leave it there. He will leave that document. He will take any piece of paper and clean water with it, not knowing what the document is. At the end of two weeks, that office has reflected his ideology. That's why those who get who wants to be a millionaire, none of them ends up being a true millionaire after five years because what they, are, what they have gotten does not subscribe to the truth, the principles that brought it. You never become wealthy by receiving dash money. I'm telling you this. There are people who receive 100,000 every month, maybe from parents or well-wishers, but the revelation they have about prosperity, about God, about money, drives wealth away from them. Is that true? Are you getting me? There are men of God whose churches you will never see miracles happen because there is a mindset about miracles they have that will never allow the Holy Spirit to bless people. Is that true? They don't want to see anybody fall under the anointing. They don't disturb us with noise. We want order in this church. And because of that, although they are God-fearing, the Holy Spirit wants to do great things for their ideology. So listen to me. The only way to change your life is to change your mindset and your perception. Listen to me. I was teaching the leaders and I taught them this. I told them, do you know why some ministries have the best of everything? Have you wondered why? You see certain ministries, the best keyboardists, the best um, computer um, people, the best sound people. Let me tell you why. Because the, the, the mindset of that man, right, will bring to that ministry people who are consistent with his ideology. There goes the saying, birds of the same feathers. Do what? So the Bible says this. In Proverbs chapter 4 now. Right? 4 verse 23. It says, guard your heart. You see that? With all diligence. This is the Bible. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are what? The issues. The quality of your life is locked up within your mindset. I believe God for anything. I believe God can take this ministry to any height. Hallelujah. I do not ever believe that there can be limitations in the work of God. That's my mindset. Right? That's why you see members of living faith. For instance, they are men of faith because they are a reflection of the conviction of the founder. Being a man of rugged faith. It's in living faith you hear that a man died and they carried him and rubbed oil from his head to his toe till he came back. And they come to testify. Do you have the gods to do that kind of thing? It's in living faith you hear that a man died and for three days his wife was with the man on the bed and said, you are still my husband, you are alive. And after three days, he comes back to life. 
He did not need to necessarily change them. He first changed himself. Listen, if you are not changed, your words will not carry power. Your words only reflect the authority based on the change that has occurred in you. That's why, see, let me tell you, if Creflo Dollar or any of these people who are really well, they come right now and teach you on prosperity, some of you will be crying and you hate poverty forever. Not necessarily because what they are sharing is deep. They are communicating their reality. If Sam comes and holds the mic and begins to worship, what he is reflecting to you is an overflow of his reality, the deposit of the anointing within him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why you can listen to another musician and nod your head. And Frank Edwards, for instance, can sit on his keyboard and play the same song and you are crying. Brothers and sisters, leaders influence people by becoming the change they want the people to be. Right? That means when I become convicted by my ideologies, it will influence your perception and it will be easy to change you. That's why the more successful a man becomes, the easier it becomes to influence others. Because his life now has sufficient testimonies. Are we getting blessed? Many of us want to see changes in our lives in 2015. Hear me. Change will never come if you are still blaming people. You and God in partnership with his word are the only requirements for that change to come. If you do not allow the word of God to renew your mindset, I promise you, you will never get anything in your life that has not first become a reality and a deposit in your spirit. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? That's where it is out of this that all kinds of religions bring a lot of metaphysics and what they call um, astral meditation, right? So they tell you, put a picture of the, the jeep and you look at it and say, ah! They say, now see yourself in the jeep. They say, I'm driving. You see, that is madness. But I'm only trying to tell you that they stole those laws. They are an aberration, a corruption of spiritual laws that's why whenever god wants to bless a man god convinces you and makes sure you agree with him if you don't agree with him it will never happen in your life for a long time god kept telling abraham i want to change you abraham could not get it because of his idol worship mentality and god said come out i don't know what to do to come out he said start counting the stars abraham was counting and he was seen, he would count and miss. God said, do it, just continue. And his mind was acclimatizing. And Abraham said, wow. And the Bible says, finally, Abraham believed. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. When the angel appeared to Gideon, Gideon said, oh, don't deceive me. The angel took time. He didn't quarrel Gideon. Because he knew that if Gideon did not agree with him, nothing would happen. And Gideon said, I need proof. Let the cloth be wet let the ground be dry he said no problem if that's what it takes to adjust your mindset to authorize us go ahead and Gideon said now don't be offended let the cloth be dry I, I want to convince myself when Mary said how shall these things be Gabriel owed her an explanation and it took time to explain and she said I believe I, although I've never seen how a woman gives birth without a man but I believe and he said, be it unto me according to your word. Instantly she got pregnant. Zechariah had seen a lot of spiritual laws. That's why when he doubted Gabriel, he said, let's shut the mouth of this man. He's going to use the next spiritual law I'm about to teach you to change what we want to do. Is somebody learning something? Hear me? This is what makes ministry easy. I never spend time just wondering how do we publicize to get crowd? Koinonia will be a reflection of the quality of both the spiritual, the intellectual, and the physical ideologies of the leaders. You change a system by changing the leaders. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of our fathers did not change themselves. They took one bottle of Gouda and slapped you where you took one cup. Did you change? You see that? Because they have become a reality for you and they are saying, if I catch you drinking, that's the day I will kill you. 
go and buy me gold at job. They just finished talking to you and they said, go and buy it. Please hear me. If you want to see changes in your life, you are going to have to find out what ideologies have kept me where I am. There are some of you who never believe God can bless you. Right? As you're looking at me right now, if God even says he will give you 100,000, you say, Amen. You know that kind of unbelieving Amen. Listen, let's not make God look like a liar. This is the year of the rain. There are some of you who God wants you to walk in levels of anointing you have never seen. There are some of you who want to, God wants you to walk in certain depths. But do you believe him? There is nothing God has told me that I've not believed. I don't announce things till I'm sure I've believed it. When I believe it, I don't care who believes it again. So be it. The word of the Lord will come to pass. When God told Noah, he said, rain is coming. Build an ark. Do you think Noah just said, yes, sir? No. Noah would have said, God, my name is Noah. Your name is Yahweh. You're, you are almighty. We are not the same. Convince me. Convince me. When Noah was convinced, after 120 years, based on X timing, he still didn't give up. We talk about Abraham who waited 25 years. What of Noah? Noah waited 120 years. I'm sure people will say, look, when we were 50 years, when I gave birth to three children, this stupid man was busy building this ark. He has been searching for gopher wood around the whole world to build, searching for gum, searching for a lot of things. And then when he finished, we now saw him going to the jungle, looking for every kind of bed. Imagine what they would have told his wife. Say, madam, did you have to marry this man? But listen, one day, one day, his confidence in God showed him. Listen, you may be tight in now. You are seeing what God is doing in your life. You are seeing the anointing of the Spirit upon your life. It may not show. The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are what? seen but the things that are unseen i'm giving you a scriptural proof he said for the things that are seen are what temporal that means there is a level of confidence and renewal that can change anything you see before you brothers and sisters do you believe this pastor jakes is here he will testify right from when the ministry this used to be all of us we we'll form a Aaron is here. We we'll form a circle, and I'll just sit down on the floor. I made certain statements like a fool, right? But today, and listen, this is not even it yet. You wait and see what God will do with us. Oh, I believe Him. I believe Him absolutely. Carve upon my heart. This truth that sets me free according to your do you know your academic situation can change please I'm speaking to somebody do you know your destiny can change if you keep thinking we are the helpless Nigerians I guarantee you after 50 years you will celebrate golden jubilee suffering but I will feed nations huh I may be robbing granite oil as, as, as Vaseline but a day will come why we look not brothers and sisters as i look at you i don't see the weak you that's why i say as i look at you i see nations nations who told you you will not be the mother of nations i'm 30 years so what so what about 30 years would you stand and say i saw when I was 23, I know that the Lord told me I'm giving birth to a prophet and it's going to arise. That vision is still there. I am convinced. Yeah. The things that we see are subject to change. One day you are taking your bath and you see growths and tumors all around your body. You just say, hey, this is how I'm going to die. Cancer. And the devil said, not just cancer, fibroid, fibroid. Notice, do you know that many sick people may carry certain sicknesses for years 
and never fall sick because doctor has not told them now doctors don't be don't be sad i'm just saying because you do, you did not know it was not your reality many men were carrying prostate cancer carrying all kinds of things many ladies carrying fibroids carrying a lot of things and nothing happened to them but the day they looked and said do you know do you really know the implication of ss are you aware that the way that this has been happening you won't get a child in fact the way we are looking cat is your womb self it's not looking like the womb of a human being you just say ah and you now start saying that means no marriage a godly brother comes and you say my brother i'm pitying you you i don't want you to suffer in this life reality i hope you are laughing and you are see i'm telling you the secret to some of these results that you see these are my contemplations those who know me know that my reality is defined i never surround myself with nonsense you don't come around me gossiping and, and gossiping and speaking because i know that i am absolutely in control this has become the mirror to my world this is how i see things i only see things consistent when i'm going for a meeting i know there will be an outpouring of the spirit i don't care whether they have faith or not i don't care whether they can believe or not whether they are instrumentalists to charge the atmosphere or not is irrelevant when i step there i know that i bring an atmosphere i carry my own spiritual climate me and the holy spirit a team the workers in this ministry have received of this spirit that's why in the afternoon they arrange chairs and they dress who guaranteed them that you were coming did you sign a form we having the same spirit of faith as it is written koinonia hear me tonight we are only 23 or 24 days into january you can sit down with this your belief system and you will celebrate christmas in this condition or you can rise up ah but i know people who love god they have died i know people who love god things have happened brothers and sisters we are talking about you here not your neighbor the just shall live by his faith hallelujah do you believe this i read a story of somebody 109 years still alive in fact three women they were even putting makeup 109 years life and strong in the midst of this wicked world they don't expect what do you expect in your life see these are powerful spiritual laws the second law give me five minutes genesis chapter one verse three quickly please the creative power of words i know that we have been taught that words are powerful but I want to show you the spiritual dimension of words. There is a reason why God called himself the word. You know why God named himself the word. It says, and God did what? And God, not and God wished. Not and God expected. Not and God complained. He said the earth was dark and void and formless. And God, the talking spirit, said. The word said there doesn't mean, and God declared. What it meant was, God commanded it to be so. The word said there does not just mean, and God recited. No, God didn't recite anything. Say, I'm healed, I'm healed. That's recitation. You are not talking. What many people have been talking in the body of Christ that they are calling confession is recitation. I'm telling you this. Con the word confess comes from the Greek word homologio. It's not just repeat what you say. It's you are giving an empowerment to say it. I prophesied as I was commanded. He said, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And you read the verses down the line. It says, and God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. And God said. And he saw listen to me words are powerful because when you speak a word it activates spiritual laws and activates other laws listen to me 
there are many laws that make realities to work the key to activating their operation is in words are you hearing what i'm saying so when you speak whether you realize it or not something is loosed and something is tied it depends on what is loosed and what is tied please follow me the bible says how did he put it now whatsoever you buy right do you bind just by tying a rope? Jesus looked at a fig tree and he didn't need to say the law of fruitfulness cease operation from this tree. The law of regeneration stop. I command the fertilizer don't enter the root again. He just used words and activate all the laws that needed to be activated for that tree to shrink. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So instead of learning all the laws God gives you the keys that activates them. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when I declare and I say, I am healed, I release a lot of spiritual laws. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we stand now and I declare, I say in the name of Jesus, the power of God will start moving in this place. Suddenly you hear people falling and shouting. Why didn't it happen now? Listen. The words that I'm speaking are activating both the operation of angels, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Our words activate the dimension of God that is revealed in a meeting. That's why we're during miracle service. The worship people sing songs that invoke that dimension. Are you getting what we're saying? If you know this, you will know that from morning till night, some of you have activated woes and tragedies in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, let's, let me show you a few scriptures. Our time, uh, I've been fighting. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we've been closing so late. We'll see what we can do about it. It's just the passion in my heart. Psalm 141 verse 3. Media, please help us. Let's rush so that we get up and round up. Psalms 141 verse 3 It says set a watch O Lord before where And do what Keep a door Knowing that every time I speak My mouth didn't just open A door opened in the spirit The opening of my mouth Is the opening of a door in the spirit It says set a watch Oh God this my mouth can lead me in trouble So set a watch Set a watch over my mouth. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Zipra toka shila kariata koso brande katayaraba. Vindeke sila kariaba. Numbers 14, verse 28. Very quickly. Everyone read. Want to read. 28, 28. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord. As ye have spoken in my ears, so I will do what? As I hear you say, not wish, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord. He already called you redeemed, but he said, say it. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the prosperous of the Lord say so. Let the anointing of the, the anointed of the Lord say so. They are not reminding themselves. They are activating that reality. Everybody say, when I speak, I activate realities. Say it again. When I speak, I activate spiritual laws. That's right. It depends on what law you activate. But something must be activated. When you understand this, you will know that words are expensive. Let's look at just two more verses. Proverbs 18, verse 21. If we can look at that. Proverbs 18. You can write it down. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Listen. Death and life are where? Did he say death and life are on top of your head? Did he say death and life are? He says death and life are in the power. The proceeds of the tongue. And like a seed. 
they that love it shall eat the fruit that grows from that seed the bible says the seed is the word in the parable of the sower what is the seed meaning every time you speak you sow the seed is that true he said the seed is the word so when i begin to speak even in tongues i'm sowing i'm activating laws in the spirit when i begin to pray my day is blessed in the name of the lord jesus i am lifted i'm activating spiritual laws and i authorize the spirit of god to begin to schedule opportunities to schedule certain things and you find out that after prayer you activate laws of favor as you are stepping out you bump into your destiny helper you call it coincidence the bible calls it life that your tongue released that's why job said what i have feared most has come upon me Proverbs 13 verse 3. Proverbs 13 verse 3. Please let's read it together. He that keepeth his mouth. Stop. How do you keep your life? Insurance. Answer me. I'm not against insurance. Do life assurance, life insurance. But the Bible, the written word of God, the living logos. He that keep, how do you keep your life in the spirit? By keeping your mouth. Ah. Papa Hagin said this. Kenneth Copeland said this. Those guys said these things. So many people. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. He said, I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. But I can only advise you. Choose. He said, he that keepeth his mouth. Keepeth what? He said, but he that openeth wide his lips, speaking nonsense any day, any time, and saying it does not matter, he says that he shall have what? As a fruit. Brothers and sisters, listen. Ladies, when we are, when we are about to pray, in the midst of your prayer, you will lay your hands on your womb and pray and say, no devil. No devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you are afraid right now. The rate at which ladies are scared of fibroid is alarming. You are just eating too much. You look at your stomach and say, this, this, thing, this is how it starts. I have the power to create. And I have the power to destroy. The power of words is in its ability to activate spiritual laws. That's what I want you to know. Many of us have been taught that words are powerful, but what makes it powerful? Words are keys in the spirit. They activate laws. So now, it's not just blind confession. Oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. As if you are reciting a magic formula. No, that's madness. You speak out of the abundance of knowledge that when I declare that I am blessed, I am activating something. You wait until we have the other series that we have. There are so many things that you will learn this year. Two laws you have learned tonight. The first one is that there are spiritual laws. And that one of the laws, listen, is that to change your outside, you change what is inside. Stop wasting your time. Whatever you don't like outside, get the renewal, the mind component of what you want outside bill johnson got it right when he wrote the book the supernatural power of a transformed mind i don't expect this ministry to ever go down we'll keep speaking it we'll keep rising i expect every one of you in this year to break on every side and whenever i pray for you that's what i pray i don't pray blindly and say lord there your will be done i know what his will is his will is not fake his spirit has revealed his will in his word I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We will pray for just five minutes. But I want us to take this serious because as we are praying, something will be happening to you. Lift your voice and thank him for the word.
the reality of spiritual laws bless him bless him for the word don't trivialize what you have received it has changed kings it has made champions you only arise and shine when your light comes and then the glory of the Lord rises upon you hallelujah three quick prayer points prayer point number one you are going to say lord let the ministry of the holy ghost be strong in my life so that you will open me up to these deep mysteries lift your voice and pray pray no matter your spiritual level even if you are just visiting for the first time pray from the depths of your heart Shakata prateke tele koto soto baladadadadaros. Maka prata kala poko to prateke tele kete. Shakata te baladabaka prateke te baladabos. Please pray inside and in the overflow. Lift your voice and pray. It's the year of the raid. Shake tele kete poko to Holy Spirit overshadow me in a new dimension open me up to the mysteries and the depths and the dimensions hallelujah hallelujah Prayer point number two. You are going to pray and say, Lord, whatever needs to change in my life for my the quality of my life to change, let the word of God change it. Change my inner reality. Change my mindset. Lift your voice and cry passionately. Your life is at the mercy of this prayer. Lord, I desire a new level of excellence, a new level of grace, a new level of possibility in my life. Go ahead and pray. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you. Help me to believe in you as the healer. Help me to believe you are able. Help me to believe you are mighty. Change my mindset. Change my perception. Change my perception about prosperity. Change my perception about protection. Change my perception about spiritual power. Change my perception about my academics. Change my perception about my marriage. Change my perception about my ministry, about my business, about my job, about my husband, about my wife, about my organization. Lift your voice and pray. Your life is a reflection, an eventual reflection of your convictions of your perceptions oh it's a powerful spiritual law i pray you believe it i pray you believe it hallelujah last prayer point father imprint in my spirit the revelation that my words are powerful go ahead and pray imprint in me lord i cancel every negative word that i've spoken in my life i cancel it by the blood of jesus confessions i made when i was angry i cancel it by the blood of jesus 
dangerous laws I activated that killed favor in my life confessions that killed my prayer life confessions that killed my my integrity lift your voice and pray koinonia outside make sure you are praying no matter how far you are no matter how far you are connect with us in prayer hallelujah hallelujah now find a neighbor and for the next one minute i'd like you to activate laws over that person's life activate favor activate grace activate hunger for spiritual things close every door of witchcraft close every door of failure find a serious neighbor that came to koinonia to pray lift your voice and pray i bless this house in the name of jesus i command favor upon your people i command favor i command long life i sow seeds of greatness i sow seeds of power I release the operation of the Holy Ghost upon lives, upon families. I command supernatural dreams. I command visions. I release encounters with the Holy Ghost. Encounters with the spirit of might. Encounters of favor. Encounters of power. I command no death, no accident, no terrorism, no bomb blast, no witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I command every law that has been activated, that is being manipulated by darkness over your life to bring failure, to bring woes. I cancel it. By the blood of the eternal covenant. Bless your neighbor. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Let the fountain of the heavens be open for you. Let men look for you. May they bless you. May you become the subject of discussion. I bless your academics. I change your result. I change your genotype. I command promotion to your job. Increase in your ministry. Increase in your business. Increase in your anointing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Listen. What I'm teaching you now is the true spirit of prophecy. Many people speak, but the problem is we, do, we have not been taught what happens in the spirit when you speak. In one minute, I want to release words in your life. Listen, now you know what happens. Listen, demonic spirits, enchantments and spells, all they do is to activate laws against you. That's all that happens when they enchant things the bible says in job chapter 5 that you will be delivered from the scourging tongues of men men use their tongues to tie your destiny men use their tongues to tie your womb but i come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood lift your hands and receive this prophecy in the name that is above all names I command opportunities. I command opportunities. I command favor in the name of the Son of the Living God. I command favor. I activate favor from the realm of the Spirit. The reign of favor. The reign of goodness. The reign of favor. The reign of goodness. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak against every infirmity that has challenged your body. The power that spoke it into being, I curse that power and I command that that infirmity leaves your body now. These hands that are lifted, may men bring finances to that hand. I prophesy it in the name of the Lord Jesus that this week that is coming these hands that are lifted i tell you many of you will return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ whatever manipulates your intelligence so that you don't understand what is taught whatever tears the devil sowed among the wheat in the name that is above all names I release you from that power now. Hear me? Anyone here who has been caused by your parents, they did not know they were angry, but they didn't know they activated a law that has made things to work against you. I stand under this apostolic office tonight. I reverse that law in the name of Jesus. I reverse that law. In the name of Jesus. For everyone that cursed you, I bless you. I bless you. Some of us, everything works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Things are so hard. A little thing you have to suffer in the name of Jesus. In this year of the rain, I prophesy upon your life let supernatural ease come to your life whoever must call you and help you and open the door for your next level wherever they are in the name of jesus the same way wise men saw the star and they went to jesus with gifts i call them wherever they are may they come to you in the name of jesus I release upon you grace beginning from today whatever you do will prosper every enchantment that killed your prayer life so you stop speaking you stop waking up in the night to pray and orchestrate things powers were invoked to make you sleep and not wake up and pray right now I stretch my hands to the heavens and in the name of the God of heaven, I command those spells broken. May your prayer life resurrect in the name of Jesus. Hear me? The grace to wake up in the night and speak into the womb of the morning. I release that grace upon you. Ladies, whoever has called you weak, and whoever has said you will not amount to anything in the name of the Lord Jesus I cancel that statement now in the name of Jesus hear me whatever your life has been associated with before now sickness failure lack of spiritual fire in the name of Jesus I change that situation now I change that situation now I change that situation now hear me any human agent responsible for where you are except I am not called of God in the name of Jesus we release a sword of judgment we release a sword of judgment hear me i say it again that if there is any human agent that has participated in the downfall of your life your finances and your family i command judgment now i command judgment now look at the brother that shared the testimony 2005 to 2015 
whatever wants to tie you that when others are moving you will not move forward in the name of Jesus I release you today in the name of Jesus hallelujah So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No. Preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me. This family or minister. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ he said men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all of my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one that for me gave your life. So he gave 
like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible. The Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his Father than building a ministry. People tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself. And then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation, and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise God there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave Jesus Jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep 
have gone astray. Right? He said, every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They are all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. For, they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? Watching. All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First turn back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him. He gave his health. The father gave him. He gave his prosperity. The father gave him. When we say his life. Let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away in exchange. The Bible says he was rich, but he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion, but he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33-year-old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen. If you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived. Because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one, I guarantee you. People have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, 
It was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. Is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read down what? I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess of, of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption 
man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ it's an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16. please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him, 
See that. Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, um, what do we call it? Uh, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord. A winner. A champion. One qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says whoever believed that. Listen. Whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned. Shall not perish. Here it is. But have money. But have. The word everlasting is a wrong interpretation. Everybody has everlasting life. Everlasting life is life that does not end. Your, your life does not end. You only change location to continue the living. That's why we never say, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is where? Are we together now? Thank you. Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received 
that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god many people have come out for altar call father i i am I'm, I'm born again i believe in you this and that but they have not received it he said as many as received brothers and sisters you can reject it many seated here have rejected it i give you my atm card you refuse to collect it you can reject it yet you need what only my atm card will give you you can borrow money from pastor lawrence borrow money from uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of god is like a programming something enters you and begins to walk in you it is god who is at work in us to will and to do so it's working the moment the life enters you it's like a genetic mutation it starts altering your configuration are we together now and the holy spirit is the custodian of that life when he comes he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom all of a sudden listen because of that life you are now spiritually alive you can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this why am i always failing you will never just know that ordinarily it takes that life to open that awareness in you are we together now it's like glasses you all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective no i'm not supposed to fail like this i can't i can't just be taking it like that again something must change no i've seen a trend in my family people don't get married till they are 45 i'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life and the bible says he who has the son has eternal life zoe god's kind of life now watch this although you have that life it takes the ministry of the holy spirit please listen to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life this is where a lot of people miss it oh i have life i have life the same way you say i have a car the same way you say i have an atm card can you use it i have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life you better fight your way into receiving it both of them are incomplete on one side you are seeing the suppose by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content 
of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it, you look at it, but you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not. Not they have not. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like men, men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance, a partaker of a reality. But it says, as long as he's a child, the word child here is devoid of strategy, devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process. He said he differed not from a slave. I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a cause. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God. Speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said, as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're all ready together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying Keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey, wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read, that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens, when I'm tithing, 
I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is away. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter. And Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ and I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction. Persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom. So that we will know where our place of alignment is. And it says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align. That sickness will run away from your body. Believe me. It's not just by claiming. Um, you will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting. We're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the Spirit. 
So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith. You believe I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, he's standing up. is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement. And he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus 
what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him and now i have gathered you to give you healing and you are asking god this my this i've been bleeding for six months non-stop and god said if i spared not jesus i will not spare anything whatever it would take me to prove myself i will do it if it means me killing somebody i will do it i i gave my son who will i not be able to kill listen this is the basis for conviction so every time the devil is trying to say look 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 will that prophecy work just remember jesus jesus begged the father to have mercy the father refused so listen jesus said father reconsider the father said you are joking stay there and now god is saying i want to bless you and the devil is saying no and jesus is saying god is saying just believe me and watch how i will do anything it takes is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am yeah. is there anything too hard for me to do i am that i am hallelujah if the father did not give jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said i'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws alarm and say oh guy you know we are nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter i'm a military man this is my wife i paid the price for six months to get a yes from her she's in that gutter I don't know the consequence of my action if you think i'm going to forgive you listen if it took god refusing to even give jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake then i assure you whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night <laughs> hallelujah do you believe me we are going to pray and say lord help my own belief that listen 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 that spirit that makes me keep wondering can god do it listen don't don't make that foolish statement tonight i i was praying on the tonight before i came here i was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding if you know the story behind that dear woman she shared it here all kinds of things when I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say lord i lift my faith i'm ready to respond based on my conviction lift your voice and begin to pray i have a part to play i lift up that wall of unbelief please pray pray you are able
Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship, mountain of cancer, mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond please listen do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4 don't turn there the Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me sit down sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms Peter and John and he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not God will not just get up and act listen it was God that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say Lord I put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. 
we have come oh god that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died for God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy Look 
at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions I surrender it to you I receive eternal life into my spirit I declare that from today I'm no longer a sinner I've been crucified with Christ and I have his life right now Jesus has paid the price I receive his life and I declare that I'm a new creation. The old has gone. I begin a new journey. Satan, you no longer have any accusation against me. I pray for you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, on this Good Friday, we present these souls as trophies to you. This is a response to what Jesus did. Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven. And the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty clothes in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening god bless you every other person begin to pray in the spirit rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit and say lord my time for visitation is here i won't give up no i won't give up i'll keep pressing on Till my answer comes, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, I'll keep holding on, until my change comes, Lord, I won't give up, Lord, I won't give up, I'll keep holding on. Till my answer comes, I won't give up, 
Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly. And then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her john leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we're going to pray please quickly your loved ones Please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers help them. If I were you, I will begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. begin to pass your requests very quickly very quickly very quickly my goodness I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place that's why I'm saying we should hurry up we feel the rain of your love we see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then 
um, will be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um, we just returned from Ekiti State it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind I was saying Guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we're going back to the north but we discern that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we played it was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying eh, Jimmy. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this 
we went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning I saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 I saw the obituary he just died 141 I said I got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating I didn't see any hospital around there I just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of God you are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the, the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that I always believed it but now that I've seen it ah, there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football I just remember that old woman I said plane you are joking I'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand. Lift the drums. 
just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shape baba kata altars 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 right now shake it 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 in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it bakata baba 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 is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three is like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now let them go now my dear tap that lady for me yes that lady nodding 
an angel is touching you he's bringing a miracle for you right now that's what i see i see like cold sensation coming to your head a miracle and as it's happening to her may it happen to you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ lift your hands and begin to pray over your request let it rain please pray go ahead and just prophesy and say lord this marks the end of it the bible says believe in the lord your god pray pray don't look at me pray open your mouth and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we turn go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth, we command the firmaments, we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy. You can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake the kappa, shake the the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands 
the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you is demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life 
from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.